Hello and welcome back. This is the Clay Golem. This is Foundry VTT version 12. This is my test world. And in this video, we're going to be looking at, well, we're going to talk about time generally. We're going to look at two specific modules. We're going to be looking at simple calendar and about time. Um, we use simple calendar all the time. It's, um, it's part of the midiverse. It basically controls time. But it does a lot more than that. So we're going to have a little look at that. We're not going to go into massive in-depth because for a lot of people, they don't necessarily use beyond the fairly fundamental functions. Um, and we tend to use other methods, but we don't need to. It's all here. And then we're going to have a look at about time, which helps us use that time to do some things. So all I've got installed on my test world is about time, simple calendar, and I've got my dice so nice in. So um, when you first come back into your game and you've got a simple calendar, here it is. Whee! Um, and you can see that actually this has got, I can't zoom in on the calendar itself. I might have to do that in the edit, pop it in the middle for you. Um, you can see that we've got basically a calendar, well, a simple calendar. Uh, we've got, it shows us what day we're on at the moment. It shows us uh, the season, we're in winter. And we've got the uh, the the uh, the month and year uh, and things like that presented and at the bottom here we've got a clock that is ticking away so you can see that it's currently 22 minutes past 12 um, and the seconds are ticking up now you can pause that nice and easy so that game time isn't running or you can make it run if you pause the game it also pauses the calendar so this is really useful so what you might want to do is to actually have the calendar always unpaused and actually you're controlling that time by if you've paused the game you've paused the game when you might want to actually pause the calendar directly is if you're going to combat because you might be as players spend an hour in a combat working through it but game time actually that's five minutes <laughs> um, so just be aware uh, that uh, you might want to use it for that particular purpose. Um, a couple of other things you might want to be aware of at the bottom here. Let's, keep, let's get that running again. Uh, we've got some little functions down here. So you can see we've got to move backwards five, backwards one, um, forwards one, forward five. And we've got a little drop down here where we can talk about rounds, minutes, hours, months, years. So if we stick on days, we can jump. So you can see us moving. We're now on the fifth. You can see us the 6th, the 7th. We're jumping back again. Uh, you can see where we are, which is pretty awesome. So we can jump forward days, minutes, hours. So we're at 12.23. We're now at 13.23. So uh, for those in the US, this is currently set to what you guys call military time. Uh, we call it the 24-hour clock in the UK. So 1,400 hours or 14.23. So that's 2 o'clock in the afternoon. Uh, so you can advance it as you need to. Um, and of course, the one the reason why you might do that, this is going to advance five, is, you know, we're going to advance five minutes. They're going to take a short rest and you can just advance that however far you need to do it. So it's pretty cool. Very nice indeed. And of course, you can do that by hours um, or whatever's relevant to you. I know not everybody uses rules as written for the um, the amount of um, time they spend on a short rest, long rest, etc. Um, OK, what else can we do? We've got some little functions here. If we hover over them, you can see dawn, midday, dusk and midnight. What happens if we go midday? Um, it's reset our clock to 12 o'clock midday exactly. Dawn. It's now 6 a.m. So we can jump ahead. So if the party basically are not doing anything, let's say it's it's in the evening time and they, you know, they go, oh, we've had a really rough day. We're going to go to bed early. Let's not do anything till the next morning. Uh, you can jump to morning, but of course you want to make sure that that has advanced to the next day. And it just, just did that automatically, actually, which was great. So we can go to dusk and then we go to the next dawn. Yeah, but didn't advance that this time. But of course I can just... Oh, yeah, there we go. It just did. It's a, it was a little bit slow to do it, but it did do it. 
it did update and I think it had to wait till it got certain far past six o'clock to register that it was actually a new day. So it's really, really cool in the fact that that does all of this for you. Now, you're looking at this going, what the heck is this calendar? I don't use this calendar. We can open up some options here. Now, I'm not in love with this interface. <laughs> it's pretty hard on the eyes. Um, but there's a whole bunch of second, uh, a whole bunch of settings in here. So sync day, uh, date and time changes across all calendars because you might have more than one calendar running. Uh, I'm not sure why I would use that, but you can. How many seconds in a combat round? Pause the real time cl clock on combat rule. So pause only are on the active scene. Um, pause on the scene the GM is currently viewing, etc. Uh, show notes folder. We'll look at that in a minute. Lots and lots of stuff. We've got themes open on load. So you can turn that off if that if you don't want it open all the time. There is a compact view. So you can say, yeah, open it, but open it in compact view rather than this rather large calendar I've got that takes up a bit of screen real estate. Remember where I last left it. Um, oh, lots and lots of things that you can work through on here, the scale of it and all of that stuff. Okay, what about permissions? So you can add notes, uh, reorder notes, change the date and time, which of course we've looked at. Uh, and change the active calendar if you've got more than one and you can set permissions for your various people obviously the game master can do all of that we've got currently the players can view the calendar etc but they can't add their own notes and things like that you can also import export calendars if you you know want to move it between game worlds which is great if you've spent a lot of time setting up events and festivals and, and all sorts of things like that um, there is a quick setup here as well so this bit is probably somewhere you'd want to come to so some default calendars you can set this to the Gregorian calendar um, and as you'll see it's now going to say next and it's going to confirm that we want to do that um, current date 27th of September it absolutely is and I can save that um, and I should be able to save that configuration and I haven't got that calendar on There we go. So this is the, yeah, so I've set it to today and now it's switched over and you can see this is September 2024. This is our normal everyday calendar we use in real life. Uh, just a little hesitant there. I was like, hang on a minute, that didn't click over immediately. I just needed to update it to today. So you've got the real time calendar if you like, but you've also got the Dark Sun calendar where you can read them, the Eberron one, um, Forgotten Lands, Forgotten Realms, which is what mine was on because I do tend to play in Forgotten Realms. So I can click it back to that and say, uh, yep, go to next, confirm I want to change that, thank you. I can choose my current date, save that, save this configuration. And again, if I just click that button here to bring it up to today, we're back in Hammer 1493. So really nice that there are those preset quick setup ones that cover the common world so you've got the pathfinder ones in here as well because this is system agnostic so you can use it in different places if you wish to um, but you can there's so many other settings display options so your date format you know that defaults for you americans in the uh, wrong order <laughs> fight <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> don't know why you guys do it that way but whatever whatever works whatever works so you can change all these formats if you wish to <laughs> just lost half my audience um and you can change the year immediately here uh, you can change your months so again i'm using the forgotten realms one but you can absolutely come in here and say well i want to change the name of this month or i want to remove this month um uh, here we go add more months etc so you can 100% customize this the days of the week now forgotten realms they work on a 10 day but you might not but you can change it uh, do you have leap years what about seasons when do seasons start and end okay so you can set all of those you can change the sun sunset sunrise times based on those now this is defaulted to 6 a.m 6 p.m you know, for almost everybody in the world, that's not accurate. <laughs> All year round, it does change. Um, 
unless you're in well i uh, can't think of anywhere you've got to be bang on the equator i think oh blimey i might be wrong on that but anyway it's going to vary to a certain extent even if it's by minutes uh, us in the uk here uh, there is quite a big difference between daylight hours in midsummer and midwinter moon settings so yep you absolutely got your phases of the moon how long it takes before you get those phases of the moon um name of the moon cycle length cycle adjustment etc uh you can add a new moon phase you can add a new moon so if you've got multiple moons in your world you can absolutely do that uh, time settings hours in a day 24 so we can change all of this easy peasy and then we've got notes settings here so you can add in uh, notes to go on your calendar so let's just let's close this okay and you'll see that actually when we're looking on the first of hammer we've got this little one there and when we're on that it's showing that there's a note I added a new note and it's just called new note just for demonstration purposes um, who can see this game master can view it here's my note I can put a reminder on about it etc so if I leave that on it's going to flag up for me and just remind me and say oh by the way that's there I can show it to players if I need to when it pops up I can edit it to change what's in here so it's just called new note but again I can change the dates and everything else I can say actually I want that to be on the third thank you very much um, does it repeat it repeats every week uh, all sorts of little things like that that I can do with these notes um, but it, there's not a lot of point in spending ages going into how those notes work because you're all going to use them differently if at all but they're very useful for putting like calendar events in for stuff that's coming up or little reminder notes of you know aunt hattie's birthday that might not be a main calendar event but you want to note him for it now i just changed that to say every week uh, sorry what did i change it to be yeah every week i said every week and because it's a 10 day you can see that we've now got this note in every single week in here which is great um didn't want to click that i wanted to click that one we can close those notes uh, now, if we pop back a day, where have we gone? Okay, so if we advance a day onto one where we should have a note, it hasn't popped it up because I didn't tell it to pop up. That's okay, but we've got them. We've got them in there. That's what's important is that we've got those notes. We can see it in the calendar if we want to. Oh yeah, that one's got the reminder on, not that one. But anyway, have a play with that. See what you think. Um, it's pretty cool now the other thing I wanted to show you is I've accidentally closed the calendar hang on there it is <laughs> I want to close the calendar let's, uh, let's close the notes leave the calendar down there so our time is still running okay so what I'm going to do is I'm going to click two little buttons down there for the moment um, because we're going to look at this thing called about time uh, which is a supplementary to the calendar so it doesn't do an awful lot in itself there's no interface to show you uh, that dice has just randomly rolled uh, I've randomly got a message in the chat telling me to check for wandering monsters it's just come up again what about time does is it's got some macro functions in the background that ties to the calendar so it's operating on game time. I'm not touching my keyboard at all, but I've got these set up to say, hey, every, I think every 10 seconds do one of them, every 15 seconds do the other. And that is just running off this calendar because this calendar is running. There we go, we've got another dice roll. And we're gonna get the other message. There's the other message to come up, check for wandering monsters. That's just popping up and happening automatically in the background. Now, obviously, I've got these times really short for the purposes of the video. You can see that's just it's just doing its own thing without us. Um, you probably wouldn't want to have them that frequently, but it's just tied to this calendar. So if I pause the calendar, they won't happen anymore. They're stopping. They're tied to simple calendar. If I unpause again, um, they should start. Yeah, we go. Check for wandering monsters has just come up. Die roll any moment now. Where is it? There it is. <laughs> 
But on the same side that if I pause the game because it pauses the calendar, it pauses those events as well. So that's potentially a really useful little thing as a reminder. Now you can see I've got one that says check for wandering monsters. Um, because I don't know about you, but as a DM, how often do I forget to actually do that part? You know, it's like, oh, that's right. You've been walking through the woods for all this time and I've just forgotten about them. <laughs> the other dangers. So what is actually happening here so this little macro down here it's called reminder if i edit this this is just a script that says hey game game time do every 15 seconds run a macro called roll so where's my macro called roll here it is and my macro called roll i've literally got it just roll a 1d20 and there she goes um so this macro could do anything you would like uh it, it might be weather effects it might be sound effects it might be um updating and character stats it might be automatically rolling on a wild magic table any macro that you've got you can run like this so this bit of code really simple game dot game time do every however many seconds you want or hours or minutes i've gone seconds because that's a better time for the video of course and then the macro will want it to do and it's rolling that dice what's the other macro move out of the way <laughs> this other macro that i've just called message this says every so this is game dot game time a reminder every again i've got 10 seconds but it could be minutes it could be hours and then what i wanted to say check for wandering monsters so every 10 seconds that the clock is running it will do this little message and pop it in there for me uh, which is really really useful it's really really nice you can use that for all sorts of things and again it, it might be <sighs> anything you like wild surges um you know reminder to check something um you could yeah, anything you like so you can do direct console messages as a reminder to yourself you can get it to run a macro um whatever it is you want to do you can run those which is really really nice now this is these are going to run forever now they're not going to stop so i do have a third macro on here which is just game dot game dot game time dot flush queue and when I execute that one, I run that one, it will now remove all of those events from that queue that's hidden behind the scenes and you can't see it. And it's going to stop them running and rolling those dice. So you can turn those macros, or those, um, those reminders and those dice rolls, you can turn them on, but then you can flush the queue and, and get rid of them if you want to. So, what else can you do with about time? Let's drag over <laughs> this because this is going to be really, really important. So, this is from the GitHub. Zoom in for you. And you can see that there's a number of things you can do. You can put that message out to the console rather than uh, as a message for you. You can get it to do at a specific time, run a macro in one hour of game time. So from now, run that macro. It doesn't mean it's going to do it every hour. It's just going to, in one hour's time, do this. So you might want, I don't know, a if you're not using full automation or you're having trouble automating something, you might want to have it for spell effects that last one hour and you go, oh, right, I can click that and it will just remind me, you know, my macro, oh, sorry, um, my reminder, my macro, whatever it might be, in one hour time, um, remove that spell or send me a message to remind me to remove that spell effect or the candles have all burned down you've run out of lamp oil whatever it might be that you want to use that for so you can run a macro like that but you can mix and match these so just because that is running a macro um you could actually have it put text instead of running a macro so you can mix and match now when you're looking at this be warned uh, Tim Posney, who does the MIDI verse, writes this. 
Um, and we know Tim's stuff is really, really good. It says it at the top left there, Mr. Posney. Um, but this wiki currently has a couple of errors on it. That should be a normal closed bracket, not a curly bracket. That is going to absolutely throw you. Um, so check that. And he's got the same little mistake here as well. He's got a curly bracket. If you copy that in directly, and of course that's pretty much what I used, wasn't it? Um, except I changed mine to seconds. Uh, that will fail and you won't know why and you'll get all really confused. And it's because that bracket's wrong. So just so you know, just be aware of that. Um, took me a little while to find it because we've got an open normal bracket. We've got an open, then we've got an open curly bracket. We close the curly bracket, but at no point do we close that normal bracket. We should close it there. And this is closing a curly bracket we didn't open. So it's just he's accidentally put the wrong thing in. And then I suspect that's a copy and paste job in there. So just be aware of that little thing there. Um... And if you have, if you still have issues, it might be these need to be changed to single quote marks rather than double quote marks. You might find that as well. So those are your little um, your bits that might trip you up. But otherwise, you can play with this. And of course, you can have a macro that does do this in one hour and run this macro, uh, but also give me a reminder every ten minutes that that's happening. Or you, you can combine these into one script. So what else can we do? So we can do. Every every one day, we can get it to do something. We can get it to do something in one hour, uh, sp specifically. Uh, we can set these reminders uh, to remind me after 10 minutes. Or we can get it to remind us every 10 minutes. So remind me in 10 minutes or every 10 minutes. They're different. We can clear a particular event. Now, I flush the cache to flush all of them and stop all of them running but you can specifically get one of them to just one of them to do uh, game time add do at at the specific time do the handler macro exactly what we looked at game time do in uh, do every we've got reminders reminder at reminder in reminder every so again you can read all of that here and you can go and have a play with it of what it is you need it to do. Okay, so after the DT mod interval, notify all clients. You know, it's like, what's that actually going to do for you? Possibly nothing. Go and have a play. Um, we've got this. This is Q. Might be useful. So this will show you all of the macros that you've got running for times up with their IDs. So you can run that and find out what the ID of the one is you want to stop or something like that. But it will just show you all of those little things that are running. I've only got two. Um, and you probably wouldn't want to have too many running because it will eventually impact on your system performance. Um, but again, we've got a chat queue here. So show the queue to the chat log if that's what you want to do. Now, if you're on an older version, which you probably shouldn't be and you're probably very unlikely to be, there is some... Um, about time used to do lots of different functions so historically it handled the calendar um, because simple calendar didn't exist so um, it's very unlikely that you're going to have any issues with the your stuff too old because simple calendar has been around for quite a long time now but it's really good it's a lovely little combination if you want those little reminders now I, th this journey started because one of our viewers really wanted a countdown timer um, so that they could see you know something like you know a, a timer in the corner that counted down to an event we can't do that with this unfortunately it will give us a reminder when the event happens but it won't show us a countdown or a count up to that event in that way so it doesn't quite fit that function but it's a little bit nifty isn't it you know there's just a combination of things you can do i can just click on my two message and dice roll ones again uh, this wonderful combination of the calendar combined with those macros <clears throat> I'm not sure if I even clicked them. Yes, I did. There we go. Wandering Monsters has just come up. Um, and my dice roll was going to be a few seconds behind that if I clicked it. I'm sure I clicked it. I didn't click it. <laughs> Reminder, message. 
But anyway, you can see how it works. You can probably see what you could do with it. Yeah, it's because I haven't got the uh, I haven't got the right macro down there. Oh, there it is. There it is. Just slow to kick off because of my inability to click a button properly. Um, yeah, so you can see what you can do with it. it can, that calendar is probably really, really useful for you um, for understanding what time of day it is because we know as DMs how often the players say to us, you know, oh, well, what time is it? It's like, oh, just look on the calendar. It's right there. Um, and because that runs, all you've got to do is remember to pause it and unpause it, but you can just pause the game this way. Um, rather than pausing the calendar. Now, one thing I didn't show you, of course, is um, is that when we, we can have this in the small version. Uh, so if I just double click on that bar, there we go. It's nice and small. It hides away. I can stick it up there. I can stick it down here, anywhere I want. Nice and small out the way. Probably really difficult for you guys to see on screen because it is that small. Um, but this is quite big and chunky. As, but you can choose. And as you saw in the settings, you can choose to be able to show it to your players or not show it to your players. They might want it as a, you know, as a smaller version, you know, tucked away in a corner or somewhere, you know, perhaps up here, perhaps not in front of the combat tracker, depending what you're doing, maybe down here near the chat thing. So they can just see it at a glance what time it is. They haven't got to worry you, you know, it's quarter past midnight right now. Um, but uh, the DM might have it open a bit more so that they can actually easier see the you know time and date and stuff but you saw also that you can uh you know uh, change so many settings in here right i'm babbling again aren't i uh, i hope that's useful um what have i missed because i will have missed stuff what are you using it for that i haven't commented on um or are you not using it? are you using something else instead of simple calendar to to manage this i don't know i don't know whatever works works eh Anyway, thank you for watching. Do appreciate it. Leave a like, leave a comment, and I will see you guys in the next one.